trying to preach to South Africans is like spraying perfume or cologne on a cadaver to do away with the stench. Yes. Or putting a band-aid or giving a panado to a cancer patient that's out of the door already. Does nothing. Halagate gospele. Libizin zelebaya Julius Malema wakirageng limita a man of God. That's what's good. They literally went and erected Julius Malema in a church as a man of God because likely he donated a whole bunch of money to this church. Those are our pastors. Mm -hmm. Our news networks are inviting witches on television to prophesy the future of the country. Take your little wishy prophecy and run with it, okay? As for me, I'm getting out of here. Take your little wishy prophecy and run with it like Sereba salt. Indeed, see it run. Since you refuse to, re to, to receive the salt of the earth, the true one, and the light from Jesus. I've been done for a minute, but don't nobody believe me. But I'm gonna like continue to hammer it down into your heads. Just now, before I came to do record this message, that I have to wait intervals of 10 minutes or 5 minutes in the center of just to make my phone cool down since it's hot like a monster out there. That I heard from the Holy Spirit. That's how the Lord speaks to me. Just the beginning part of it. Spread your wings and prepare to fly. You have become a butterfly. I guess the kind of butterfly that you would find in the chaos theory. I don't eat the butterfly effect that upon flapping my wings here in South Africa, there shall be a tsunami somewhere else in the world. That's what's good, South Africa. Pilengani, kiferidze. Chaiket haluhan yoro kheza halang mona down here in these streets. Literally, I don't get it. Kala galala ta intrepita harana kiferidze. I am done. I'm exhausted. But you know what? It doesn't really matter. All of my fatigue, everybody's like, oh, caraba, who's not tired? No, no, no. There is a difference between my fatigue and yours. Hmm? There is a difference between being exhausted because you've been made to lay in bed all day and do nothing because you've just been in a car accident versus being made to get exhausted because you've been running all day. South Africans are exhausted because they've entered into a head-on collision that is fatal. Whereas I'm exhausted because I've been trying to rescue you from that very head-on collision. I've been working for God all by myself, grinding like no man's business, unable to find the seven thousand others that have not knelt to bail in this country and so therefore feeling as if I'm the only person that's trying to defibrillate the country back to life and receiving no you know like visible signs of life coming back to this like flatland rando that is called the South African conglomerate literally I am done I am exhausted my hands are worn out I am maladapting because I keep on speaking the same stuff over and over and over and over and over again to a bunch of people that are like if it ain't broke don't fix it oh really really this is what's good I'm a step here mm. I'm feeling indeed just like Elijah and the Lord indeed has told me there are 7,000 others that have not knelt to bail whether at I don't know but guess where I'm going to find them? Likely in another country. Been saying it. I'm getting the stepping on out of here. However, you don't believe me. I have had seasons where I have thought that maybe just maybe something can be defibrillated back to life until I got pursued by a whole bunch of spiritual junkies that like to see a woman that is nice and spiritual. However, in and of themselves, they like that spirituality. So because they covered it or they want to taste what it's like, just to see what it's like to date a very super fervent like Christian woman on Facebook. Literally, I want to Google if at all you can switch off D DMs on social media because I can't stand the fact that I can see witchcraft in operation with the kinds of people that DM me. It is clear there is a strategy to wade me off to a little baby and make me Oedipus's mom. I've been lamenting about it over and over and over again. So if South Africa wants me married to Oedipus, then I will get, I guess I will go where it is that I don't have to be subjugated to the tyranny of little man Oedipus. Tiny little man Oedipus that also needs a little bit of CPR done on him because he's not really alive. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. We are literally not doing this. South Africa, you can keep your little webbed feet, maladaptive thing that you are doing so you struggle to run fully, fully because you don't have proper feet to run. Your athleticism is eroding away out of you. You're like an athlete that is now doing nothing but eating donuts all day long. Can't nobody bring all your fitness back because you don't want to stand up and run again. You're like a person that used to be super duper fit and now you're rolling around in bed on the daily. I can't deal. I can't deal. Dear Hambamna, dear Pumapa. 
and go tsama ka sfutu futu sa parafini le go isweteng go siya a plume of smoke ke lise ka dust ke be ke lise ya vf ka menwa thwatlegileng khoso lo sa magong le le kisa mora go ntse ke bale ga ebe le wa le drip ga le lahlegelwa ke meno you all are going to get your teeth knocked out running after me as i flee this land i'm getting out if they persecute you in one land flee to the next i'm doing it i'm doing it because the lord has made it clear that that's what's going to happen another 5 to 10 years of this insidiousness o lo hlanya lo ke ale ka ntjotsa this please like go go baleng tlhalosetseng he batho ba ipitsang bazalwane hanging out in corporate south africa how does it feel to be both a mozalwane and a witch that has knocked out all the viable workforce that likely could have the same skills as as you if not you and being the only individual that is educated in a particular subject matter and so the only one able to give advice what does it feel like having knocked out all of your competition and so therefore cause the flat lining flat lining of your organizations or the mediocrizing of your companies how do you feel since your company's performance has flatlined it has plateaued it has ceased to be pioneering it has ceased to be thought leading hmm? what does it feel like being the only mediocre accountant in there since you knocked out anybody that could be slightly even so like ever so slightly marginally better than you because that is a South African workforce now you have literally caused a skills exodus out of the country because you are exasperating people who are actually truly skilled in what they do because you weigh them down with all of your thievery of work causing them exhaustion and so the african diaspora they get out what does it what does it feel like when i'm doing thing a little bit of a tabo a little bit of a tabang a little bit of a carole a little bit of a pinky sitting in corporate south africa after you knocked out all of your colleagues from the competition field hmm? what's it like riyadh sitting there in south africa you jamal you sitting liam zanzi you irfan they're not a loyang cuz it's like a mandia le makha le batho ba ntso go loya go how do you feel having finally gotten that promotion not because you're actually good at what you do not because you're actually skilled at what you do not because you're the properly qualified individual but because you made sure that you were the obvious choice cuz Everybody else was so bad in comparison to you that they chose you due to the fact that you're not that all the really good people what does it feel like having no real skill but being given the job anyway can't be easy because you keep a company mediocre and because there is nobody else that is better around you since you had no knocked them out you keep the job anyway keep running your companies into the mid- into the middle ground mediocrity space while others of us will get out of this place you know oh elon musk wa hambile Did a little bit of a voyage, eh? Went to the United States of America, and this was his reasoning when he left. It is the land where I'm going to be able to utilize all of my ingenuity and my entrepreneurial knack with any level of relative success. He left South Africa because he wanted to be somewhere where he could freely innovate because he saw that there were chock blocks in this land. He saw that long time ago before all of us woke up to it. Turns out if you want all of your talents to actually be explored that you might fly out there like a butterfly, you got to leave South Africa because South Africa will block you from being the best person you ever can be. You are deliberately antagonistic to your own economy. The people who knocked me off the market aren't necessarily even bad at what they do. They just make sure that they're the only people that could do it. So you have killed the economy of this country by keeping mediocre stuff in there you've made sure no one that is better than you can ever rise to the top that they might knock you off a promotion and so you keep the country mediocre what in the world does corporate south africa look like it's not even able to innovate its way out of this darkness that's your country you made it you keep it i don't like it it's a cesspool it's stank and i'm leaving it you are not going to make out of me prometheus indefinitely do away with what it is that you are doing or like perish thank you repent or perish I am not going to be a little guinea pig where you're experimenting with what happens if you take witchcraft to the nth degree with you persisting that you're going to finish this thing off okay this is what I'm going to do I'm going to leave and I am not just speaking blowing steam after after uh, uh, up some like proverbial like behind in so speaking such a thing as this I am prophesying when God keeps on showing me gamba spread your wings and prepare to fly karabom tana you've become a butterfly and in particular the chaos theory one the effect of which is going to bring a tsunami to your country man kutu puma sia hamba once noah leaves the show there is a flood all the best with your deluge all the best with your food, like webbed feet that you think you can flap all the way up until the flood is over when there is dry land i dare you olympic swimmer to continue floating in the ocean when there's nobody coming for you that's you south africa you're about to be deluged